During the cold winters in Colorado Springs, we tend to use more energy. That means higher utility bills. At Colorado Springs Utilities, we believe in the power of conservation. Simple ways to conserve energy, save money, and keep comfortable during these long winter months. Today, Steve Lineweber, a Colorado Springs Utilities Conservation Specialist, will show us some easy and inexpensive techniques to winterize your home. We'll start with the exterior, caulking the windows and other openings. I'd like to show you an area here around the fireplace that the owner of this home has obviously seen these cracks around between the brick and the siding of the home and these are one of the ways that air gets into a house. Around these windows, look for the framing around the windows, check it for caulking around here. This home has been painted and laminated so many times it's in effect somewhat caulked with paint. Uh, but actually it's good to check because air gets in around these areas as well. Big windows like this means larger areas. If you look at the length and width of these gaps that go around this framing, and many times it can add up to be a hole. If you saw a pane of, of glass broken out, you would immediately replace that. But oftentimes we don't think about these little gaps that run for long distances around these big windows. This window is a good example of someone trying to put in an inexpensive second pane of glass to make a storm window out of this. So it's twice as good as a single pane of glass. Now that we understand the importance of caulking around windows and other exteriors, let's take a look inside the home. Let's look at this door. What we want to do is put some weather stripping inside this door jam where the door closes. What you first want to do is take a, a moist rag or a cleaning fluid like this and spray it on the door, on the door jam here, mm -hmm. and wipe it down with a clean rag so what we're going to apply has a good clean surface for it to stick. So this is the weather stripping material. Uh, this is a plastic film. It's made to be folded many times. You can fold it into a V-shape so it faces the end door of the house. Peel the sticky backing off, lay it in place just inside the door jamb here, and then it sticks all the way down. Cut it when you don't need it anymore and do the same application all the way around the door. Okay. It doesn't take very long, 15 or 20 minutes, and you're done. One of the easiest ways to reduce cold air from coming in is to install outlet gaskets. First thing you want to do is take the screw out of the outlet and then pop the cover off, take the particular uh, outlet gasket that we have here, pop out these little holes that are in place, set it right over. This is where air is coming in, same place where the electrical lines are brought into the home. Set this in place, a little bit of fitting there. This goes right back on top and our screw goes right back in the middle and you're, you've got one less outlet that's leaking cold winter air back into the house. In the basement, where furnaces and water heaters are usually found, you can save a lot of money by following a few simple guidelines and improve the safety of your home. What's important to do is change off the filter uh, at least once a month or check it once a month depending on the household and how much activity you have. And it's for two reasons. It's to make sure that you have good air quality in the home so you don't end up uh, recirculating uh, dirty air as well as making sure that the unit remains running efficiently and it's not choked on its own dirt that is collected on the filter. So I've simply pulled out the filter here. You would either wash this particular one or you could get a filter that's made out of say fiberglass or a hyperallergenic filter if you wanted to clean more dirt out of the air in the house and put that back in its place. There's three points I want to make about this particular water heater. One is to turn down the thermostat so that you get a 120 degree rating. You can measure that at one of the faucets upstairs nearest the water heater and determine that. Turn this dial uh, to left or right by the indications of warm to hot is to get 120 degrees. The second thing is to keep debris away from this burner port because it's a safety issue. If, if there is a, is a delayed combustion on this, flames can come out of the front of the unit and cause darkening and catch some things on fire around it. So I always leave that free and open from any obstruction. The third thing I would consider for this particular unit is adding or consider adding a, an insulation blanket which helps retain heat in the water which is where you want to keep it. Speaking of safety, wood burning fireplaces can be a beautiful addition to your home but they can also be dangerous and run inefficiently. By adding glass doors to the front of your fireplace you can keep indoor air inside and force outdoor air to fuel the flame increasing both safety and efficiency. Wood burning fireplace, a couple of things. Open the flue when you're using the fireplace. Close the flue when you're not using it or you know all the embers are completely burned. Now let's take a look at something we can do to save money year round. Switching from regular light bulbs to compact fluorescent bulbs is quick and easy. 
These light bulbs cost a little bit more than your regular incandescent bulb. They can be three to four times as much. However, they save about 75% energy on the lighting and they will last 10 times longer. So in the long run, they save a lot more money and they save you energy in your home. I would like to replace this for you and show it's uh, instant on. We get this screwed in here and it provides its equivalent light or more light than the standard incandescent bulb of its equivalent size. So you can see it's uh, lit right up. We have a good amount of light coming off there and of course with anything in your home if you're not using it we recommend you go ahead and turn that item off. Another way to save money quick is to make sure you only use appliances when they are completely full. This includes washers, dryers, and dishwashers. Loading a dishwasher is an important thing to do to save money and energy. It'll use the same amount of energy and water in each load so why not have it full? Okay. And that's the important thing to do there. If you have a, a cycle that avoids the heating, drying cycle, do that as well. Why pay that extra money to heat those dishes when it's a simple drying rack left open? It will dry on its own anyway. We live in a very dry climate, so that's not usually an issue. To learn more about how to save energy and money, please visit Colorado Springs Utilities online at www.csu.org or call us at 448-4800.